The universe may appear random. Two trillion galaxies spread across the cosmos. But in this cosmic chaos, scientists detect order. When we first saw that the universe was full of galaxies, it seemed like overwhelming chaos, but it's not. They are all connected. Galaxies link up in a gigantic cosmic network spanning the entire universe. How this pattern emerged may be cosmology's biggest puzzle. In some senses, you don't understand something unless you understand how it comes into existence and how it's formed. And galaxies are the basic building block of our universe. To solve this mystery, scientists need to go deep to the very edge of the observable universe and study light from the first galaxies. Chile, 2021. Scientists point the VLT, or Very Large Telescope, towards the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It's a patch of sky famously photographed by the Hubble Space Telescope in 1995. The VLT's power allows astronomers to see much deeper into space. Imagine you take a grain of sand and you put it on your fingertip and you hold your arm out like this and you block a part of the sky looking at that grain of sand. That's the size of the Hubble Ultra Deep Field and yet it contains thousands of galaxies in it. The telescope stares at those galaxies for 155 hours and picks up the faintest of glows. Ancient hydrogen gas concentrated along a strand of space 15 million light years long. The filaments are just one tiny section of the cosmic web, the largest known structure in the universe. The scale of the cosmic web is enormous. It is, by definition, the largest thing that we can see in our universe. Today, the cosmic web is a lattice of filaments, linked streams of hydrogen gas that form an intergalactic network spanning the entire universe. Inside the nodes of the cosmic web, you'll find galaxies, stars, black holes. Along the filaments, you'll find gas that connects these nodes, and the gas will connect to the other galaxies and clusters of galaxies. It's this beautiful superhighway of large cities that are connected through these filaments. We can see the cosmic web about as far back as we can look. And really, galaxies are forming along that web all the way back. This cosmic infrastructure dates back to the earliest days of the universe. 13.8 billion years ago, the universe ignites in a tiny ball of super hot energy. It expands and begins to cool. Energy transforms into primitive subatomic particles of matter. The heat from the Big Bang is so intense Gravity is effectively powerless. The very early universe was super hot, super energetic, and regular particles of matter were zipping around so fast that not even gravity could hold them together. But regular matter wasn't the only thing in the early universe. In the background, gravity is working on something else. Regular matter's ghostly cousin, the invisible substance known today as dark matter. It makes up about 85% of all the matter created in the early universe. Normal matter and dark matter both existed around the time of the Big Bang, but the way they played out was very different. Just 10 seconds after the Big Bang, the infant universe is billions of degrees Fahrenheit, still far too hot for regular matter particles to clump together. But dark matter plays by different rules. Dark matter isn't affected by the Big Bang's intense radiation in the same way that regular matter is. And so because it's able to cool, it clumps together in a way that regular matter doesn't. As dark matter clumps grow, 
they exert a gravitational pull and begin to form shadowy structures. As soon as the dark matter gets a foothold, we have a place where there's a bit more stuff. Then that attracts more and more dark matter. 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the intense heat drops to a few thousand degrees. Normal particles of matter move around more slowly. Protons and electrons bind together and form atoms of hydrogen and helium gas. Then, gravity from dark matter starts to work on regular matter. Before you know it, you have this very clumpy universe with these huge dark matter halos that can now start to draw in also ordinary matter in the form of gas. A billion year building project begins. The dark matter clumps pull in clouds of gas. The foundations of the cosmic web and the galaxies. Just as when you build a building, you know, there's a lot of, of work that happens before the building goes up. Our universe spent a lot of time laying the groundwork for this cosmic web before it switched on the lights. The foundations are complete, but the job isn't finished. How did those clouds of gas transform into the greatest structure in the universe? The secretive dark matter that brought the gas together is also on site, managing the build. It was really the dark matter that called the shots in, in cosmic clustering, because it outweighed the ordinary stuff by, by a big factor. In essence, the cosmic web is made of dark matter. Tendrils of material are stretched out across the cosmos. As the sprawling structure builds, its gravitational pull strengthens, pulling in more dark matter. The clumps begin to collapse and shrink down into filaments. These meet at even more tightly packed clusters, creating a huge dark scaffold that drags in more hydrogen gas. Imagine drops of dew on a spider web. That's like hydrogen blobs being pulled into dark matter's cosmic web. After tens of millions of years of construction, strands of gas stretch across the cosmos. Fast forward to now. The web appears in all its star-spangled glory, lit up with galaxies. We know at some point stars and galaxies formed. The big question is when. What were the first galaxies like? That's a big mystery. So how then did the lights of the cosmos switch on? Evidence suggests that as the universe assembled its web of dark matter and hydrogen gas, the biggest stars that have ever lived set the cosmos ablaze.